Thanks for joining me for another iDoctor UK video. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at this iPhone 11 Pro, and it's been sent to me because it's stuck in recovery mode. I've got a good inkling of what this is going to be, what the fault is. It was a rainy bank holiday Monday, and I've had a couple of phone calls about these same faults. It's safe to say it's probably the top sensors up here. Liquid gets into that ear speaker and then causes corrosion at the back. So I just want to make sure that it is first. The first thing I'm going to do is plug this into 3U tools, which is some free software what has got some really handy tools in it for repairing iPhones. So usually what happens with the iPhone X series onwards, you get liquid what gets into that ear speaker up there and it'll cause the phone to loop out until eventually that loop will time out and then get stuck on recovery mode. So a quick way to check this is we're going to choose exit recovery mode and then it'll either stop boot looping again or it's going to go straight back into recovery mode. Or it might have dried out in the time it's took to get here, which isn't the case. You can see we've got the Apple logo and then it's going to come on again and it'll do this infinitely, not quite infinitely, until it times out and then goes into recovery mode. So that sort of just says to me, there's a problem up here. So let's get this opened up. Okay, so starting off with the two bottom screws. Then we'll get the razor blade in and the prying tool. So now that we're inside the device, we're gonna use the tri-wing driver to remove all the screws holding down the shields. Then we'll disconnect the battery, followed by only the top sensor flex cable. So the top flex is this one here. So we just use the prying tool to disconnect that. And then we're going to reconnect the battery and then try and boot the phone again. Now this time, I'm hoping that the phone will boot normally and then go straight to the lock screen or whatever the phone was doing before it started looping out. And it, lo it looks like it's going to boot straight away, which just confirms that the problem is that top sensor area. There we go. So the phone boots, it's on the lock screen. Whatever customer data was on there before is still there, which was very important for the customer in this case. So what we're gonna do, we'll turn the phone off now, and then we're gonna start repairing this top flex so that it doesn't do that same problem again. This time we're gonna disconnect the screen connectors and remove the screen from the phone, and then unscrew the three tri-wing screws holding down the ear speaker and front sensor. And so that this loosens off really easy. I'm just warming it up. It's not hot, it's 200 degrees and full wind speed to loosen the sensor off. And I can see some liquid moving about and evaporating, although the camera probably won't pick that up. And now we'll go into the microscope and take a deeper look at this one. So the stuff what I'm expecting to see is exactly this. This is corrosion. So you've got the corrosion on the proximity sensor there. That's just proved what the problem was. And the solution for that is to remove this proximity sensor, remove the ambient light sensor, clean up underneath, and then we'll reattach them with new solder and hopefully it'll boot straight away. So first of all, we're gonna disconnect the ear speaker from the flex cable using the soldering iron. And then we'll put that to one side because we don't wanna, we don't wanna fry that. Now I'm gonna unfold the ambient light sensor and proximity sensor because they're sort of stuck together. It's a very fine flex on there. So you just got to be very careful that you don't snap it. And they're only stuck together with a little bit of tape and it'll unfold and look something like that. And then I'm going to apply some hot air directly onto the proximity sensor until it melts the solder underneath, allowing me to pull the sensor away from the flex. So that's removed. And then we'll flip it over and do the same thing with the ambient light sensor, which is the slightly longer one with the white filter on it. And that's removed. The ambient light sensor doesn't look too bad or too corroded at all, but definitely, 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 when we look at the proximity sensor, you can see it's really, really crusty. All this stuff, what's kicking about there, it's bridging these pads together and it's causing, it's causing the phone not to turn on. So I'll start off with some alcohol and just a cleaning brush. And we're gonna get as much of that gunk away as we possibly can first, till it's as clean as possible. That's got rid of just about all the corrosion what's on there. So for my next job, 
I'm gonna add a little blob of flux onto it. And then I'm gonna remove the old solder using a little bit of copper wick. It's important to be pretty gentle when you're doing this because as you can see, some of the, um, some of the coating on the, on the flex has become, has come away a little bit. So we'll cover that up with some UV mask in a minute. But apart from doing that, that's just about ready to receive the proximity sensor back onto there. The UV mask is just gonna prevent any uh, rogue bits of solder causing any bridges and the same problem happening again. And then we'll just cure it with the UV lamp. Just wipe off any, any gunk off there. So yeah, I'm happy with that. And that, that'll be fine to install the proximity sensor on. Now we flip it over. We'll do the same to this ambient light sensor flex area. Pads, should we call them? Should we call them pads? Yeah, ambient light sensor pads. Remove the old solder. The way to sort of guarantee that it's gonna work first time, every time, is to reball them with a stencil. So that's the way that I'm going to do it. So that, that one was much easier to clean up because it was just solder that we were removing from there. So I'll put this flex to one side and then I've got this little jig that we use for the face ID repair. Well, the now obsolete face ID repair. There's another video for that coming very soon. And I'm gonna drop the proximity sensor upside down straight into, straight into that one. I'm gonna clean it up with some isopropyl alcohol and the cleaning brush get rid of as much corrosion as possible. And then using the copper wick, just remove the old solder again. It doesn't have to be perfect in this case because we are gonna add solder to this one. Now we can add the stencil on top. Actually, let's give it a wash again first. Get any flux residue cleaned up and then lay on our stencil and reball this guy with some 183 paste. So now we'll just add some, uh, some of that solder paste on there. Spread it on with the back of the blade. And now we use the hot air to melt the solder so that it sticks to that proximity sensor for us. In terms of the heat and the wind speed, I'm at 275 and 75 wind speed, 275 degrees centigrade, obviously, Depending what hot air station you're using, it will vary massively. So just get used to using your own tools, what you've got. That's more important than sort of asking or copying what temperature I'm using. That's the solder balled onto the back of the proximity sensor. We're gonna do the same thing for the ambient light sensor this time. And then there's another stencil for that just there. Fresh paste. I know a lot of people use 138 paste for like reballing and stuff but this mechanic stuff is 183 but it, it's solid it's much better than using 138 is easy to break whereas this this ain't breaking i've been using it for a long time and had no problems with it whatsoever my advice if you do use that though is take the lid off it and never put it on again throw the lid in the bin because you want it to dry out that's our ambient light sensor reballed. So now we'll just go back to sticking them straight onto our clean flex. Because it's this way up, I'm gonna go for the proximity sensor first and we'll add a little bit of flux onto there. I'm not gonna go mad with the flux because that will spread out nicely. And of course, it's important to make sure that the sensor goes on the same way that it came off. Don't ask me how I know, but I know that it won't work if you put it on upside down. Let's use the hot air again. And then when the solder melts, the surface tension of the liquid molten metal, so the molten melted solder, is just going to pull the, uh, pull the sensor into place and line it up for us. So that's the prox sensor installed. Now let's do the same on this one. I guarantee, before I start doing this, I guarantee that I'll blow it away at least once. Now I'm going to be really surprised if I can get this on without blowing it over, but we'll see. I'm gonna hold it in place. And I believe that that is soldered back into place now. So we'll take that out of the microscope now. And before I reattach the ear speaker onto there, 
I will plug this into the phone, then plug the screen in and then reattach the battery. Then hopefully this time it should boot without a problem. Now you might have noticed that I haven't mentioned face ID yet. When water gets into that top area there, I'm always conscious that the water's also got into the I'm also conscious that water's got into the dot matrix or the dot projector on the face ID. So I don't want to say, yes, we can do it without losing face ID in this case, because there might be another fault there. But certainly if it's only the fault with the proximity sensor, it looks like it's going to boot, by the way. There we go. Then we should be okay. Um, so all that remains to do with this one now is to resolder the ear speaker into place and then test all the functionality on the phone. But we can see that we've got a working phone. It's not stuck in a boot loop anymore. And yeah, this, this phone should be fine. Obviously I'll test face ID later. And then if I remember, I'll film it and it'll be in the video. If it's not, this is the end. Goodbye. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. So I've just managed to speak to the customer and they were kind enough to provide us their passcode for their phone. And so we can see the face ID is indeed working as it should. And it's allowing me to set it up. And that should, there we go, look at that. So face ID works. It looks like everything else works. Job well done. Thank you everybody for watching and I will see you next time.